Okay, so uh, we're going to uh, be adding uh, in uh, integration with uh, third-party authentication authorities uh, using um, a technology called OAuth. Um, and um, in particular, we're going to be looking at integrating with uh, Google uh, or Facebook uh, or, or any, uh, any other third-party uh, provider and that, that um, interests you. Um, and uh, we have saw that uh, Passport uh, provides support for quite a, quite a big uh, collection of, um, uh, of authentication providers. Uh, and uh, they all more or less work uh, similarly. Um, uh, right now, the, the, way, the way we have it is that uh, we have the uh, browser here, uh, and the browser is sending a request to our uh, Node.js uh, server, um, and it's uh, uh, providing a cookie. Right? And that, uh, that cookie uh, is being used for um, to validate the uh, username and password against our local uh, database, and hence is referred to as the local strategy. Right? Um, then the uh, the server when um, when it, uh, it, it, it is uh, authenticates the uh, the, ser the the user, it creates a session, a local session, uh, and it um, it sends back a valid uh, cookie that is then is stored uh, by the browser here on um, on its local file system. All right. Uh, now we would like to be able to um, to integrate with third-party API uh, in such a way that uh, if someone already has an account on um, on Google or Facebook or any other uh, of these other uh, social networks, um, we'd like to be able to provide them with the capability of of logging into our system with that with those with those accounts, right? Meaning, if I already have an account somewhere else, I don't want to have to create a brand new account here. Okay, uh, so so we're going to add a couple a couple of um, uh, authentication providers here. Uh, one of them is going to be Google, and the other one is going to be Facebook. Uh, so uh, for I'm going to demonstrate how to do it for Google, and on the project, uh, you're free to. Choose whether you want one or the other, right? But um, uh, for the for the assignment, you're free to choose which one you want. Uh, but then for the project, just do the other one, right? I don't I don't care which one. So I'm going to demonstrate with with Google. So first of all, we're going to need to uh, um, register our application with Google. Uh, we need to go to uh, Google's uh, developer console, right? And and, at, and, and tell it that, hey, we're building a, this new application. Uh, we would like our users to be able to, to log in with you, uh, with, with Google. Uh, and Google. And so we're going to go out to Google. We're going to fill out a couple of questions uh, in the developer uh, console. Uh, we're going to have to give our application a name, right? And, uh, and this is going and, and to give us a couple of information. So one of them is our. Uh, application ID. So this is a unique identifier that identifies our application. We can have many number of applications, right? Um, it also, it gives us a key, right? It's a long, or, or sometimes referred to as a secret. Okay, uh, it's kind of like a, a unique identifier that, uh, pass, like a password, uh, and also it's going to allow uh, allow us to register a callback URL. Curl. A, uh, a a callback URL that we're going to tell it, you know, when when the user uh, is tries to authenticate, how should it notify us uh, whether it was successful or not, or what was the result of, of this user trying to log in? Right? It needs to be able to to, to let us know. Uh, so so this is going to be a um, an absolute URL, right? So it's going to be something like HTTP colon slash slash uh, if, if you're hosted on Heroku, this would be your Heroku URL, you know, whatever dot Heroku app, you know, dot com, whatever your app is, okay, slash, right, where is it, where in the, uh, in your application is there a, an endpoint, a web service endpoint, right, that Google can call you back, right, and provide you uh, information about the user profile. Make sense? Uh, 
So this is for the remote application when you're hosted on Heroku. Now locally, on your development environment, you can also provide <coughs> HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1, the same path of colons 3000, right? If you're running it on the port 3000, you need to provide the 3000, right? Uh, plus the path of where, the same path, the same exact path, right, as in for Heroku, okay? And what, what uh, Google's gonna do is that it's gonna send the response to, right, all the callbacks that you, that you gave it, right, so that it can notify you either on Heroku or it can notify you locally on whether the, the person has been successfully logged in. Make sense? Well, not logged in. They, they have successfully authenticated with, with Google. Right? Uh, so the way it's going to work is that we're going to add a button that's going to come to, the, to our server, but our server is not going to handle it. Right? Well, it is going to intercept it, right? But we're not going to do it. We're not going to. We're not going to authenticate you with our local database. We don't know anything about about you. Okay. Instead, it's going to redirect to Google. It's going to redirect to Google, and Google is going to authenticate you. It's going to provide a username and password, and you're going to log into Google. Right. Uh, now, in this request over here, uh, the, uh, we, we, we're going to have a chance to ask Google that, hey, when they authenticate, we would love to have information about them. I'd like to know their basic contact information. I'd like to know their maybe their profile picture. Uh, I'd like to know their first name, last name, gender. Uh, I'd like to know, um, you know, uh, may, maybe if they allow me to have access to their uh, contact list, right? Um, now, the, Google is going to notify the end user. Right? The end user is going to look at this, and it's going to see all the things that the application is asking for, right? Any, any author, uh, authorizations that the application is asking for. And, uh, and the user is going to have a chance to say yes, yes, no, no, no. Okay, I'm not going to give them access to um, to my to my pictures, right? Um, and the user is going to authenticate themselves, uh, and then Google is going to use your callback. It's going to use your callback to call you back, right? And you better be ready to listen, right? You'll be ready to have that endpoint, um, and it's going to pass you an object. It's going to pass you an object that represents the user. Okay, the Google user, right? And in that object, you even have an attribute called ID. That ID is go it's it's Google's unique identifier for that particular user, right? Um, it's a long number, plus any other information that the user has agreed to uh, to share. Okay, um, and and here we're going to receive that, and what we're going to do is is a uh, is uh, we're going to store it in our database. We're going to store this user who has just logged in with Google. We're going to check to see if the, if the user already exists in the database. Right? Uh, if the user already exists, we don't need to do anything. We're going to, we're going to tell pa uh, Passport, hey, this, this person exists, uh, log them in. Right? This is the currently logged in user. Create a cookie. Create a cookie for them. Right? Uh, if it doesn't exist, if the user doesn't exist, we're going to add them to the database, right? Notice that we're not going to have any identifiable information that the user doesn't want to share with us, right? Certainly, we're not going to have a password, right? Uh, probably we're not going to have even a username, right? We're going to probably have just an email, perhaps. Uh, at a minimum, we will have the ID. At a minimum, okay? Uh, but we might not have anything else, okay? And that's going to be the only thing that identifies that that user uh, uniquely. Uh, we could then in the profile ask them for additional information if we want, right? But they're not compelled to have to share anything with us. Make sense? Right? Now, there's a, notice there's a couple of set of cookies that are happening here. Uh, there's a cookie that is uh, maintaining, that Google is maintaining to remember whether you have logged in already with Google, 
right? If you come back again next time, it's the same Google user and tries to authenticate, this might go to Google. Google, uh, with, with, with Google's cookie, uh, Google says, oh, yeah, I know that session. I don't need to authenticate you anymore, right? You, you're, you're good. You're good to go. You know, so I'm not gonna, I'm not going to challenge you again, right? And it's just, it's just gonna be a pass through. It's not gonna even ask me to log in. It'll come back right immediately, saying, "Yep, there's the profile information for that user." Okay. Uh, so, so there's gonna be two sets of cookies, right? This set of cookie uh, reminds us that that user is logged in with us. But then there's another set of cookie. There's another cookie that is Google's cookie. Right, that even if we log out from our uh, from our local machine here, right, we still might be logged in into Google. Right, so that tomorrow, if I, even if I logged out and I and I try to log in with the same user, uh, the the cookie Google's cookie is going to go out. If it's still valid, it's not going to ask us to log in, even if we log out. You see that? Right, so it's different. Right, if when we log out, yes. My, my cookie is not valid. I don't know who you are, but if you try to log in with the same user, it's going to go out to Google. Google's going to say, oh, you're still good. It's going to come back, and it's going to create a new cookie for me, even though it's the same cookie for Google. You, see, you understand? <coughs> They're separate. Right? And, and uh, I can't control Google, uh, Google's cookie right? because I don't own Google's domain. I don't have control over that. Uh, other than going to the browser and just throwing away all my cookies, right? That would be the only way, perhaps. Or maybe going into incognito, right, where no cookies are valid at first, right? And 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 then and it doesn't remember anything once I close that session. Yes? All right, so that's the only perhaps control that I have over these cookies. That makes sense? Alright, so let's go on and actually implement it. <coughs> 